Hey guys, welcome back, and new subs, welcome to. Um, it's Saturday night, I'm probably going to post this a bit later on, so it's available Sunday tomorrow. Um, it's been a bit of a journey on and off, with uh, looking into the megaliths over the last, what, five, six years or something. Uh, a lot of people focus on different parts of the megalithic mystery. Uh, some focus on um, kind of the architecture, some on the engineering, the math, the ability to lift heavy weights, the ability to quarry um, large pieces of stone, um, the different areas around the world where the megaliths are, from Egypt to Peru to Lebanon to even Osaka Castle, Easter Island, there's quite a few different places dotted about the place um, that show hints of gigantic stonework and now and again in all these different places you see, you see very precise pieces of stone cutting and that's really where I focus on, it's more the precision aspect of the megalithic mystery rather than anything else. And as you can see here, the Great Pyramid is just like a massive creature. Let's see if we can get a better picture. That bee step is like two million blocks of about three ton of pop to make about six million tons. Um, there'll be different varying sizes, but on average, that's quite a lot of stone. So, I don't really buy into copper chisels and just throw in a huge workforce behind it. I appreciate the Nile floods pretty much every year, like it used to in a big way. And um, it used to be like a food basket where you didn't really have to farm. So for a few months of the year, um, you probably would be free, or pretty free, with just some people working the land and harvesting and stuff. Which kind of opens up manpower, people power, um, as well as time roller. And that is probably your highest probability of how the pyramids got the manpower to be created. But to have these workers working on all of these two million blocks all rubbing down each side of each block perfectly with copper chisels to leave bob on perfect cut laser precision accuracy within the uh, masonry cutting I'm not buying it it just doesn't make sense you'd see a ton of um, chisel marks and you just wouldn't get such really high accuracy. So my question really is how to get high accuracy in the ancient world. And when we look to the future going forward, we have a habit of shrinking down technology. So going back in time, can we expand it up and still, still achieve a similar result as what we would in the modern day using modern technology? So... I've been pondering on it for years, this, how to create precise blocks that would make a giant pyramid that's 6 million tons that you could make so precise by connecting the blocks up that it's bob on accurate to north really, give or take the smallest margins. So going off all of that, that bit of an introduction to why I'm on this case and everything the best option I can come up with after six years of looking at this and looking ahead another ten years I'm not going to come up with a better solution to this problem than what I think I have of recent so my best approach here is a water abrasive cutter and I know that sounds pretty complex really, but it's actually quite a simple concept. You have a motor in the modern day that pumps water around to increase the pressure in the system to get about 60,000 PSI in that system. And the numbers are not that much that relevant really for what we're looking at here, but 
and you're welcome to check all of this info and data on the link below on my website that I'll post all this on with the um, CAD work and the references I've used and everything calculators I've used and stuff but like um, you have a pressure side of a water cutter and then you just run a pipe from the pressure side of it with the high pressure water in it to what's called a cutting head and a cutting head's pretty simple it looks like this you have oh there we go you have um, the high water pressure coming into this nozzle here it goes down here where in the modern day now we have a habit of adding abrasive through an extra pipe on the side here but you could also just have the abrasive in the water and send them both through into the cutting head now the cutting head here is just a simple chamber for the water to flow into narrowing down to a very thin cutting tip of a head so the water can shoot out and go through your material like stone steel or whatever and the mission of a water cutter is you get the pressure up high so when it comes through the pipe the pressure the force on the water goes through a narrow opening to come out and the pressure the force is converted into speed and this is this occurs through the nature of water movement fluid dynamics from what i can tell and everything i can tell about this so far about fluid dynamics and the math makes sense but i'm not a professor in fluid dynamics i'm the first person to say it but from what i can gather pressure and force when water has been channeled from a thick pipe to a thin pipe turns into speed and as water is speeding up pressure is actually reducing so what we're doing in a water cutter is we're taking pressure and then we're converting it to speed and the speed part is to get abrasive particles up as fast as we can so when they come out the cutting tip the nozzle here they're coming out in the modern day at, with a 60,000 psi machine at about Mach 3 which is really fast it's a few thousand miles an hour now with Mach 3 cutting you can cut stone with it but usually it's pretty thin stone and you know the cut speed isn't great but it is very accurate it's very precise it's laser precise so the idea is to get one of these cutting heads and a cutting and um, a water cutter system that uses abrasives and the abrasives shoot out at Mach 3 of the cutting head and they hit your material that you're trying to cut and it hits it the particles as well as the water at Mach 3 in this case and it's like a little me mi micrometeorite impact and all these little micrometeor mi micrometeorite impacts start cutting through the material from the bombardment so we want to do that in the ancient world without using a pump to boost up the pressure and making the pressure or more the speed of the particles that are coming out even faster because we're cutting very thick stone in the ancient world so we want a fast cutting speed to justify the means so what i've come up with is a system that's similar to this trying to use the evidence of the past of what i've seen with my knowledge of basic um, mathematics, f dynamics in fluids, fluid dynamics, as well as engineering a few other bits to see if we could come up with a scaled up solution. So, today, without further ado, I would like to show you what I've come up with. Now, this seems quite something at the beginning of it, but it's working on the same principle as um, the water cutter from earlier and what's happening is water oh, that's never a good sign 
if we try that again. There we go. Let's try again. Water is going to come down this channel here and it's going to be filtered for any debris so it's coming out pretty clear water and it, we're going to come down this channel with the water and you can see that let's just see if I can do this you can see some water filters in the channel there's no water in the channel there yeah. there we go so you can see I've added some water filters in there and it's basically slabs of stone with an inch thick slit in them and plenty of slits in them to allow the water to pass through them and I've just covered them with um, a hessian cloth as to stop any smaller particles that can get through and I'd have two or three of them and that way if the first one or two missed any particles for any reason the third one would get it and the idea is to keep nice clean fresh water without any debris going down this channel and this channel that I've created it's seven foot high and it's five foot wide and as you can see there this is six foot tall this water filter and I'd have five feet of water running through five feet high of water running through the system and that way you would get five feet width, five feet high to make five feet square and then you just need the flow of water, the flow rate of the water um, to be measured which I'd probably want to run a slow stream into the system at say about a half a meter a second's worth of water. Now with the water flowing into the canal it comes to a it comes to um a vertical shaft and when it comes to this vertical shaft it's going to be transferred down into the vertical shaft which is a bit like a big thick pipe and the idea is it comes down the pipe and is thin it is reduced into a thinner pipe in this big block of stone here and then shut out like a laser beam like our water cutter jet water abrasive cutter is supposed to do and if we go 3D on this for a second if we look in um, the framework you can see how the water comes down the shaft and there's about 30-50 tons worth of water in this shaft which is like a big pipe holding a lot of water, a lot of weight of water and it comes down into this granite stone here where it's focused into a point, all the weight of this water we're trying to focus it into a point so it comes out the end in a smaller noz in in a smaller nozzle similar to the modern day cutting nozzles and around the point where the water is coming out of this big vertical shaft and going through the stone what we do is we we use little gems which looks like um, a donut that's made out of a gemstone like sapphire and when the water and the abrasive is going through the gem, you're not eroding, you're not abra um, abrading, I think is the correct word, um, the actual stone, the granite stone, any wear and tear it comes onto the sapphire stone. And this is how modern um, abrasive water cutters work. They use a little sapphire stone, sometimes a diamond stone with a hole in it, and then um, the abrasive and the water are shot through there at hyper speed at Mach 3, Mach 5, as much as you can get to then abrade your material. And what struck me is I, I didn't, when I was designing this, I was designing a chamber to hold 30, 50 tons of water. And I was designing a stone to go on the bottom of it to hold the weight of the water to then channel the water into a specific beam to use for cutting and what I found really strange is don't you think that looks a bit like an upside down obelisk so I didn't really see that coming to be honest because I, I wouldn't 
connect an obelisk with much, to be fair. It'd be like more of a triumph thing, if anything. It's what I'd presume, but honestly couldn't tell you. But the basic idea is your water runs in from a canal or a river or a lake, say. It comes down this channel where it gets filtered and cleaned. It gets to the bottom of the channel where you can see... Oh, you can see a lock gate in, that is here, which you can regulate the flow of water with. And then, if we just look from top down... My machine is not happy with this giant card, that's for sure. Yeah, that's probably never a good time being there. Come on, buddy. There we go. I don't know why it's doing that. But it's not a happy machine because it's huge, this card. <sighs> but, you can see here that there's um, a lock gate within the canal. And you can see at the top there's like um, a lock key or more um, a bar to open and close lock um, to regulate the flow of water and to turn the system off. Well, if we just jump to realistic view, you can see this lock key coming out and how it can be opened there uh, to let the water flow through. Where you can also see this hatch here, and this hatch is to let abrasives be added to the water to mix in from the top. And you could close this, you could take this piece of stone and close this gap using the markers on each side. And that way, if you're shoveling in, or you're pouring in, or pushing in abrasives, you can measure how much abrasive is going into the water with the flow rate, and you can tweak it to get the correct mixture you're after of water compared to abrasive. So, from a simple mechanism, we can do quite a bit. We just need a channel of water, that's a decent size, in this case, I've got 5 foot by 5 foot squared of water flowing at 0 0.5 meters a second. Where it comes down to a, a lock gate, which acts like an on-off switch for your water cutting system. And it allows you to tweak any flow rates you would like to do to speed up the flow rate at the bottom or reduce it for... So, for example, you could speed up the flow rate to cut through large blocks in at speed, or you could reduce the flow rate to get more specific detail and accuracy. And you can then tweak the abrasives compared to the water mixture to get an even better um, cutting mixture. So, this giant block of granite would be mounted on a base, and underneath this block, we'd have to be able to push giant stones from a quarry underneath and through it. So, let's do some presuming, and let's say we can make a canal that flows water in, like we've said, and that we can filter the water, as we've said, with, um, say, hessian cloths over the filters there. Then let's say we can channel 30 tons of water down this 50 foot shaft which is 50 foot by 5 foot by 5 foot and let's say we can channel it down to the bottom where we can then force the pressure the force of the weight of the water the the force of the water through a small nozzle at the bottom ah i'm sorry did not mean that there we go um, through this focused nozzle at the bottom, which is like uh, an upside down obelisk, to the point at which we can then focus it through a small gemstone with a hole in the middle, a sapphire say, and shoot it out the bottom of the stone, where underneath our big giant stones that we'll be using from the quarry are waiting. So, um, this constitutes what you think now of a small machine that is a water cutter but where um, a small machine now that is uh, recycling the water 
we wouldn't recycle this water, we'd just run it from a canal or a river system. Excuse me. Um, and then just flow it through. We wouldn't have to recycle that water. And where in a modern system it'd use a lot of energy, and we'd probably only get 60,000 PSI um, from the system, we'd hope to get a lot more force and um, speed from the cutting nozzle than we would in a modern system using this method. And this all revolves around Bernoulli's equation with force pressure being changed into speed and as long as we can get our abrasive particles up to Mach 3 plus we can cut stone with it um, but it'd be nice to get it to say Mach 5 or Mach 10 to make sure we can really cut through solid sandstone efficiently because if you got 140,000 40 ton blocks I think that's about 6 million tons worth of sandstone so if you were going to use this machine if this was viable if this is a viable machine you'd still need to send through that laser beam 150,000 140, 150,000 40 ton blocks worth and not only that you have to cut them on all sides of each of the blocks and you'll have to get a huge block and chop it down into small blocks and different things like that and that's where I could really show you here and I think I might just put it in one video and save everyone going to a second video so let's say let's presume that this canal we've made with capstones on top so debris can't fall into it that filters water so we have nice clean water to not mess with our system that we can regulate and change our levels of abrasive that we're adding to the flow of water and that when it does come out the bottom it doesn't come out as a trickle and my maths just off but it actually comes out at a good speed say Mach 7 Mach 10 let's say all of that works and that would be the key part to the precision because the moment you've got um, a water cutter, a, an abrasive water cutter cutting perfectly downwards you're going to get perfect straight sides there's going to be no cut marks on them and when you put them together they'll just fit perfectly once you've done one side you can flick it over so you've got a nice flat base where you can cut all the other sides just the same so let's say this does actually work now how would it look if we start putting 40 ton stones through this machine and start chopping them up and even though we still have plenty of um people power workforce in the ancient days and we know that how can we best use it um do we need tons of loads of people there all the time do we need it just when they're flicking a stone over um, that's my question really so let's say this giant cutting nozzle which you could probably shrink down to this little room in the modern day let's say that this giant machine is doing that job in the ancient days because if we kept shrinking this down we'd probably get something like a modern 60k PSI cutter so We've shrunk this up because it'd be easier and probably more logical to do in the ancient days. Um, it, the, the probability that this engineering was used seems high to me. If not this, then a similar method for the fact that if you've ever tried to cut stone um, using spinning motion like a 9 inch grinder, some of you guys will remember me making a scale bricks and it was just unreal to cut the stuff because your motor will overheat if you tried to cut uh, your diamond tipped discs just blunt constantly um, when your discs heat up they buckle and bend so your cuts come out weird and you've got to spend an age cleaning them up and it, it's really hard work 
the list just goes on. It just doesn't seem viable for um, a soaring action or a spinning action just from warping of heat and different things. It's it's possible, but I don't see the ancients getting the accuracy and precision high enough to actually make such an accurate giant pyramid that's so close to north and that fits so perfectly so my best after six or seven years no joke is a water cutter and you can see the principles here i, I imagine this is um a bit out of the blue for everyone i mean it, it kind of surprised me when i just kind of started making it but it's kind of grown on me i guess but the Noah's equation is um the tricky part i think i've got that the um calculator online agrees with my math and my logic but i really would love um a professor or any of you guys who um know a bit about fluid dynamics to see if the theory matches would match reality and if we will be getting Mach speeds for the particles coming out of the coin head um, in real life if we actually made this and I'd love to make this this is um, it's all done in feet this CAD model uh, trying to keep with 12s a bit more feels a bit more Egyptian than uh, metric um, so let's say this thing works and how would um, how could we lay out a stone masonry work cutting yard to to make this work so I figured the best if it'd be great if this canal was on a cliff about 50 foot above the ground and this entire part was a solid sandstone cliff say and then this shaft was just cut out from solid sandstone presuming it's watertight and it's not going to leak which it seems the Egyptians used to really know when a piece of stone was good and when a piece of stone had cracks in it somehow so I don't put it past them and as well as I don't put it past them of lifting a giant stone up for a cutting head or a few bits like that I just don't put it past them they've what I'm doing now seems super small fry to a six million ton pyramid that's bob on accurate so if I can do this I imagine they can do a better job and I'm basically here using basic math basic engineering with a bit of weird Bernoulli equation fluid dynamics which is a bit weird but I imagine they'd have had a version of that back in their day as well so I won't put it past them so between it all it actually seems pretty reasonable to kind of suggest certainly beats aliens and lasers and the rest of it <sighs> so let's say that's legit and certainly in the comments feel free to troll and stuff but it won't get answered and it won't take anyone anywhere so if you've got something that i've overlooked or you can confirm or confirm that doesn't work or confirm that does work that'd be appreciated because i appreciate this could work quite well or i could have overlooked something and it just won't work due to some fluid dynamic stuff i don't know so uh it'd be intriguing either way uh feel free to post um but let's say this cutting head works and let's say underneath the cutting head we make a platform where we can cut some stone with it so made this basic kind of stone quarry cutting yard and you can see how that giant stone with the cutting head would be placed on top of here and you can see how I've left a square just about in the middle there for the water to be shot down where there'd be water channels coming off the sides here and my question really was how to move giant stones and smaller stones and when I say smaller stone I mean like 20 ton stone instead of a 40 ton stone then even 3 ton stone um, how best to move those and for 
the giant blocks I'd have I thought about bringing small blocks from a quarry as well as big blocks and I think bringing giant blocks and then just chopping them up into different sizes seems easier than bringing different size blocks and still having to chop them up to trim them to get precision on each block to make them all fit perfect so what I've done is um, I've put these blocks on what I've been calling um, cheese wedge rollers and you can see that these rollers are like um, a cheese round and they're like 13 inch wide they're 13 inch diameter and these channels that they're sitting in are 12 inch deep so each roller is sticking up from these long channels these grooves about an inch and you could increase that height uh, the depth of uh, well you could increase the height of the rollers by reducing an inch off the floor say or you could just make them bigger if you wanted uh, more ground clearance but you can see I've done yellow for sandstone and I've done this orange for a granite and this is a 10 foot by 10 foot by six and a half foot granite block that's 650 feet cubed it weighs 50.6 tons a strong man can pull a Hercules plane on a, run a runway with pumped up tyres that weighs 40 tonnes for about 20 seconds. So if you remove the rubber aspect, the rubber friction aspect, and add in cheese rollers, and the cheese rollers are made out of stone, so it's stone on stone, I imagine you'd get somewhat of a railroad effect and the friction would be pretty low and you could push that without too much problems and when I say a str one strong man can pull a Hercules at 40 ton I'd just say send 10 or 20 people to do that one man's job and then have teams and rotate between te two teams if they're tired so you could roll these blocks along and I've done it so you can roll the blocks along let's say um these blocks are coming from um, the River Nile off boats from the quarry side and have been tucked down the Nile to um, the Great Pyramid side, the uh, plateau in Egypt, and uh, worked along route towards the um, Great Pyramid, or they could be worked on the quarry side, then put on a boat and then sent um, towards the pyramid. So. It works either way, but let's say um, this here is quarry way. This is leading to uh, the quarry, say, coming from the quarry. And things had, uh, stones had come up from the quarry here and they'd be sent, channeled up into our cutting head space, which is here. And as they go through the beam of um, death there, the Mach 5, Mach 10, abrasive cutting beam they'd be split into two of these say and you know that'd be the granite version and that'd be the sandstone and we'd find that the granite version would take longer to cut because it's a denser material compared to the sandstone so um, we could account for that a little and you can see how I've used round balls here here and there and not so you can position the block if it's come off the rails a little or if you want to be more precise with these blocks and it's the same principle as the cheese wedges they're just an inch higher than the fl floor and this floor is made up of four stones four granite stones that are connected in the center with four pillars being pushed down placed into each of the stones from this stone you can chop it up under the beam into two of these stones and this you can then spin round on the balls as you can see below and then send it through the beam and chop it up into two of these stones or you could use one of these giant blocks and you could chop it up into three or four say 
and create m stones that are more the size that would be used for the ancient um, for the great pyramid so oh dear I'm asking a lot you can see how this block for example is 54 feet cubed it's a sandstone block and it's 3.5 ton and it's 6 foot be 3 foot be 3 foot and roughly from what I can gather the stones in the pyramid seem to be around them so that size so um, I added that in there and then I added some flat stones in there uh, for base stones for example and you've got the sandstone equivalent the granite equivalent with larger blocks that you could then use just as much as um, the smaller ones and you can see that I've laid this out so the giant stone which is 40-50 ton coming from the boats or the quarry direct is going through the beam of death the water cutter the abrasive water cutter where then from one of these sides are going to be rotated to be sent through again to cut them into the correct size or say at one of the edges would be rotated so the next side can be rotated round to be sent through to be cleaned up as well and if I was making this system if I was making um, this build to actually cut these giant stones I'd want it so no energy was wasted so that none of these stones will get in the way of other stones so they can't be moved in the correct order to the Great Pyramid or to another site to build on so I've kind of created as best as possible because I'm considering that this is going to be inside um, the side of a cliff say because um, that's where our um, large shaft is going to come down uh, we're using the, the the material strength of the cliff as a giant pipe to hold 30 tons of water so this base part would be at the bottom of the cliff and the reason why I use the bottom of a cliff that way the stones that have gone through the cutter they don't need to come up a ramp from underneath the ground if you made this shaft going 50 foot underground they only need to just carry on along the surface to their final destination and not only that you would probably have some daylight to work with where deep underground you start messing more with light and stuff so it could be useful to have this at the bottom of a cliff and then 50 70 foot above this would be the water source and the canal that we looked at earlier and then from there we would send these giant stones through the um through the base of the cutter I have no idea what the names would be for these different parts but uh, we would send it through the um, the stream of death where it would come back and you could clean it up and put in different shapes and stuff into it and you could imagine these stones and these stonemasons after practicing getting good at the accuracy more getting good at um, being able to spin the stone to do uh, laving tricks with the stone so you get perfectly round um, columns and different things and this is like what the technology would have started out as I imagine and then over time would have been improved and tweaked and progressed it's just here I've got the basic fundamentals that I'm trying to see if they're plausible or not so I don't want this uh, video to go on too long um, I imagine people are probably scratching their head like what is this guy smoking um, but uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed this um, I hope you've got an idea of where I thought about this going and how the water cutter the water abrasive cutter is functioning and how that actually would be when it comes to the giant stones um, and if anything this this CAD this 3D model to me shows just how vast the um, Great Pyramid is I mean 
you're talking those little three ton stones over there that was six b three b three i think they were six foot b three foot b three foot um they're like three and a half ton three ton and there's a couple of million of them all stacked perfectly on top to make a very accurate pyramid i mean why they made the pyramid i really couldn't say i, I wouldn't even guess and why they did most of the stuff in the old days, I wouldn't really know. I'm sure they had their reasons. Um, but the engineering side, there's something about it that does seem pretty legitimate to um, where this is coming from. Anyone who's making a great pyramid with that accuracy, they, they're good engineers, they're great at mathematics, they know stress points. They seem to love the triangle where the Romans love that Roman arch. So, there's just so much to it, guys. It's, um, I could probably go on all night, but, um, I hope this generally has give you an idea of what I'm trying to get at. And if my water source for pressure, for force, wasn't correct from my canal, I'd be interested to see if there was another way of boosting up force and pressure behind a cutting head to replicate a modern day water jet cutter as well, abrasive jet cutter. So um, thanks for watching guys and I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Um, feel free to check out further data that I'll add and probably build on in the next few days um, below in the description. Uh, so I've not seen you guys for a bit, I really have been busy. This is the first time I've stopped to do anything but coding for the last nine months and I think this has took about a week or two and I really shouldn't have done it but I couldn't resist once it was in my head I, I envisioned this and then couldn't really write it down and word it so I just made it in 3D model and hoped the model would speak a bit more than I could uh, so thank you for listening to me rambling and um, thank you to everyone who's been doing great work out there seriously on this topic i'm i'm just a part-timer uh, looking into it who who's kind of enjoys the engineering side and especially the precision side um but there are some people who've been you know boots on the ground it's hard to beat that stuff but to those who have had boots on the ground i'd ask have you seen any hints of this technology that's not that's kind of um that shows in real life terms so at the unfinished obelisks in egypt you see a lot of balls stone balls that they said were um bashers to you know uh use like tools to bash on other stone to chip away stone they look more like stone ball bearings to me if you look at the great pyramid um the Grand Gallery, I think it was. Um, you can see what look like uh, runners on either side of the gallery where some cheese wedgie type rollers or ball bearings could have been placed and used there. Um, I've seen circular gems that look like fin donuts made out of sapphire, a crystal, I'm not sure, but I've seen them somewhere around Egypt. If you've seen them too, could you post me a picture of them? Because it looks it looks like a, a round circle that's probably going to be green or one of the sapphire looking colours. And in the centre it's got a hole in it that looks like it's had abrasion in. And I've seen it somewhere, but I think I've seen a few of them now and again, but I can't place it. So, um, yeah, just um, my thoughts there, and um, I hope you enjoyed them. So, have a good Sunday, if this indeed comes out on Sunday, which you probably will do. And sorry for it taking so long. See you later.